ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Friends, let us look at an example problem for packed bed reactor design. So consider a second order reaction. Consider a, a second order reaction A going to B plus 2C. So now suppose if this is a tubular reactor, suppose if this is a a tubular pack bed reactor, pack bed reactor filled with catalyst, it's filled with catalyst and if the gas fluid feed stream is actually flowing at a superficial velocity of 4 meters per second. So, that is the superficial velocity with which the feed stream is flowing and if the feed temperature is 260 degrees C which is equal to 533 Kelvin and if the pressure at which the fluid is flowing into the stream is 4.94 atmospheres and it is undergoing a reaction A giving uh, A giving B plus 2 C and suppose if the diffusivity of the species diffusivity of the species uh, D E A effective diffusivity is given by 2.68 into 10 power minus 8 meter square per second. So, that is the diffusivity of the species and if the corresponding intrinsic reaction rate specific reaction rate is 51 meter power 6 divided by meter square mole second. So, that is the specific reaction rate and uh, there are other properties that are given. So, density of the catalyst particle is about 2.1 into 10 power 6 gram per meter cube that is the uh, density of the catalyst and then the uh, surface area which is available for the catalytic reaction is the is 410 meter square dip per gram of the catalyst. Now, so we need to find out what is the uh, what is the pore diffusion if this is supposed to be a, a strongly uh, internal diffusion control diffusion limited uh, reaction. So, it there is what we need to design the reactor find out what is the uh, size of the reactor etcetera. So, now the first step towards doing this is to find out what is the uh, concentration with which the fluid is actually flowing into the reactor. So, C A naught is the inlet concentration that is equal to P by R T that is the pressure with which the fluid is the uh, species is flowing into the reactor divided by the gas constant R multiplied by divided by the uh, temperature of the fluid stream at the inlet. So, that is given by 4.94 divided by 0 0.082 into 533. So, that comes out to be about 0.113 gram moles per liter. So, that is the concentration with which the feed actually enters the reactor. So, now if I look at what is the rate law, the next step is look at the rate law. So, we said it is a, a second order reaction. So, therefore, the rate law rate law minus R A prime that is equal to the specific reaction constant multiplied by the uh, C A square which is the second order reaction. And now we can write a mole balance. See the mole balance which we have already looked at in the uh, in the previous lecture. So the mole balance for uh, such a packed bed reactor will be the axial dispersion coefficient of the reactant species DEA into T square CAB, which is the bulk concentration of the species at any location in the reactor divided by DZ square minus u which is the su superficial velocity. Let us assume that the superficial velocity velocity remains constant and, and also that the volume expansion is negligible. So, into d c a bulk divided by d z plus r a prime into density of the catalyst. So, now plugging in the rate law which is basically given by the plugging in the rate law we find that 
d the we can write the mole balance as the axial dispersion coefficient dea multiplied by d square ca by dz square minus u dca bulk by dz minus if capital omega is the uh, overall effectiveness factor then the overall effect uh, the rate is given by the overall effectiveness factor multiplied by the corresponding rate evaluated at the surface concentration so if the if the mass transport limitations are negligible because the reaction is now happening at a strongly internal diffusion control the reaction rate now has to be estimated at the bulk concentration itself so therefore we can uh, we can write the rate expression as the effect factor omega multiplied by the uh, reaction rate evaluated at the bulk concentration CAB. So, that is equal that is equal to 0. So, that is the mole balance. Now, we can rewrite this as into the density of the catalyst. So, this can plugging in the rate law we can write this as axial dispersion coefficient into d square CAB by dz square minus u into dCAB by dz minus omega into k double prime that is the specific reaction constant multiplied by the area of the catalyst which is available for the reaction per unit gram of catalyst multiplied by the density of the bulk density of the catalyst into C A B square that is equal to 0. So, that is the mole balance which captures the heterogeneous catalytic reaction which is happening inside the pack bed reactor. Note that the explicit expression for effectiveness factor may not be available and it will be a function of bulk concentration C A B. Now, suppose as before if we assume if we assume that the rate of diffusion of the species d square C A B by d z square that if that is significantly smaller compared to the rate of the bulk flow of the species and the corresponding let us assume that the corresponding condition is satisfied then one can have, we can rewrite this mole balance as d c a b by d z that is equal to minus omega k a double prime which is the specific reaction constant into s a into rho b into c a b square divided by u. So, that is the uh, mole balance. For a second order reaction, the overall effectiveness factor is in general a function of the conversion. However, as the reaction is internal diffusion controlled, we assume overall effectiveness factor to be approximately equal to the internal effectiveness factor. In fact, it turns out that this is the case for this problem as will be shown shortly. Now, we can integrate this expression and we need some uh, initial boundary conditions to integrate this expression. So, suppose the suppose the initial the, the suppose the concentration of the species that is actually fed into the reactor at z equal to 0. So, z equal to 0 is the inlet to the reactor at that location the concentration of the species is C A B naught. So, suppose at z equal to 0 the concentration of the species is equal to C A B naught. So, that is the boundary condition with this we can integrate the mole balance and if on, on integration we can find out what is the length of the reactor as a function of conversion. So, the length of the reactor is u divided by the overall effectiveness factor rho b is the bulk density of the catalyst k is the corresponding specific reaction constant into uh, C A B naught into 1 by 1 minus x minus 1. So, that is the relationship between the length and the corresponding other parameters of the reactor and the conversion. So, now suppose if I specify that uh, the conversion has to be 0.81, suppose if the conversion has to be 81 percent, then what is the length of the reactor? What is the length of the reactor that is required to achieve such a conversion? So, now what is the first step here? We need to find out what is the uh, overall effectiveness factor. We need to find out what is the overall effectiveness factor. And if we know all the other parameters, then we should be able to calculate what is the length of the uh, reactor which is required for that particular to achieve that particular conversion. So, therefore, now in order to find out the overall effectiveness factor, 
See overall effectiveness factor is basically a combination of the resistance that is offered by the internal by uh, the internal effectiveness factor and the resistance that is offered because of the external mass transport. So therefore, the first step is to calculate the effectiveness factor eta and that will be for a, for a general nth order reaction the effectiveness factor is given by 2 by n plus 1 to the power of 1 by 2 multiplied by 3 divided by the corresponding Thiele modulus with n equal to 2 n is the it is basically the second order reaction. So, we have to find out the Thiele modulus corresponding to the second order reaction and by plugging in the Thiele modulus we will be able to find out what is the effectiveness factor for this particular system. So, we need to find, find out what is the Thiele modulus for the for this uh, reaction system. So, now the Thiele modulus for a, a second order reaction is given by R which is the length scale or the radius of the spherical catalyst pellet into K double prime into SA which is the area of the uh, catalyst per gram or area or surface area of the catalyst available for reaction per gram of catalyst and that is the uh, that is the value of SA and suppose if the uh, multiplied by the density bulk density of the catalyst into CAB naught which is the concentration of the species at the inlet divided by the corresponding diffusivity DEA. Note that Thiele modulus now will be a function of local concentration and therefore a function of position. However, for the parameter values chosen the Thiele modulus is not very different with respect to position and hence it is evaluated at the inlet concentration. Now, if the diameter of the particle that is being used for this particular reaction if that is equal to 0.38 centimeters of so the particle that is filled inside the reactor is 0.38 centimeters then we can calculate the Thiele modulus phi 2 and that is equal to 2.59 into 10 to the power of 7. So, that is a significantly large quantity so it is very large it is very large which suggests that clearly it is an internal diffusion limited system and, and now we can calculate what is the effectiveness factor eta. So, that is equal to 2 by 3 to the power of half into 3 divided by 2.59 into 10 to the power of 7 and that is equal to 9.47 into 10 power minus 8. So, the effectiveness factor is extremely small which suggests that the it is a strongly strongly diffusion limited. So, if it is strongly diffusion limited then the overall effectiveness factor omega will be approximately equal to the internal effectiveness factor itself and so that should be equal to 9.47 into 10 power minus 8. So, now plugging in this this expression the all the details of uh, overall effectiveness factor etcetera into the into the model equation to find out into the expression to that uh, relates the length versus all the other parameters in the conversion. So, we can find out that the length of the reactor in which the reaction has to be uh, conducted in order to achieve a conversion of uh, 0.81 is, is basically given by 3.62 into 10 to the power of minus 2 meters. So, that is basically 3.62 centimeters. So, in order to achieve this conversion for the given set of conditions the reactor that needs to be used is extremely small. So, it is it is important to perform such kind of design to get a feel of what should be the dimensions of the reactor in which the corresponding reaction has to be conducted in order to achieve a, a certain conversion. So, now with this we move on to the next aspect where uh, we want to now look at fluidized bed reactors this is another type of reactor which is commonly used in industries for many different purposes. So, let us look at the fluidized look at fluidized bed reactor. So, hereafter it will be referred to as FBR which is the fluidized bed reactor remember PBR is the packed bed reactor FBR will be the fluidized bed reactor. Now, the major advantage of a fluidized bed reactor is that it can process large volume of reactants. So, it uh, can, can actually process
can process large volume. So that's an important advantage of using a fluidized bed reactor and it is very commonly used in catalytic cracking. Catalytic cracking uh, particularly of petroleum naphtha which is again an important process in, uh, in petroleum industry. So catalytic cracking is one very common example where fluidized bed reactor is actually being used in the industry settings. So what is fluidization? So fluidization is essentially where uh, small solid particles are actually suspended in an upward moving flow. So suppose if there is a tube which uh, and there is a fluid which is flowing through the tube then the velocity of the fluid is such that these particles which are present inside the reactor which is catalyst particles which are present inside the reactor are actually gets they get suspended in the fluid as it moves. So this process of getting suspended in the upward moving fluid is what is called as a fluidization process. So it's the fluidization which is actually a key plays a key role in these kind of reactors. Uh, clearly the because fluidization is involved clearly there is a lot of fluid mechanics which is required in order to in order to model or design such kind of a, a reactor some aspects of which is what we are going to see in this lecture. So now the uh, fluid velocity in order for fluidization to occur the fluid velocity should be such that the fluid velocity should, should be such that it is just sufficient it is just sufficient to suspend the particles in the fluid, uh, fluid stream but not large enough. it should not be large enough to actually take the particles outside the reactor. So remember that these are particles which are present inside the reactor which may be a tube and then there is fluid which is flowing from the bottom of this tube and the fluid velocity should be just sufficient in order for these catalyst particles to raise along with the along with the fluid. However, it should not be significantly large enough in order for these particles to be washed away from the tube. So therefore, the controlling the fluid velocity as actually an important step in the uh, fluidization process. So the, the another important aspect of the fluidized bed reactor is that it provides excellent mixing. Because while the fluidization process occurs these particles are carried by the fluid and it is not fluid velocity is not large enough so that the particles leave but there is a recirculation of these per catalyst particles and that causes a, a vigorous and excellent mixing which is required in many different kinds of reactions. So the fluid that is typically used for fluidization process could actually be a gas or a, a liquid stream it could be either of these two which is commonly used. In this particular uh, discussion we are going to concentrate main assume that it is a it is a gas which is actually fluidizing the catalyst particles. So let us look a little bit more deeply into what is this fluidization process. So there are different kinds of flow regimes which may which may be attained while the fluidization occurs. So let us look at what these flow regimes are. So now suppose if there is a tube here and this is filled with let us say catalyst particles it's filled with catalyst particles. Now there is a gas there is a fluid which is actually flowing through this tube. So let us say it is a gas if the velocity is very low if the if, it's, if the flow velocity is very small then what happens is that the velocity of the fluid is not sufficient to lift the particles that means that these particles they exert a, a gravity force due to its natural weight while these gas when they actually move through these particles they exert a drag force on the particles. Now if the gravitational force that the solid particles are exerting is significantly larger than the uh, 
uh, drag force that is uh, that it experiences from the gas which is moving past it, then these particles will not be displaced and they will tend to stay as it is and the gas will simply escape from the pores and then leave the reactor. So, this kind of an operation where the gas flow rate is extremely small is called the fixed bed operation. It is called the fixed bed operation and the height of the catalyst bed which is present inside the reactor in this fixed bed operation is called the is called Hm. We refer to that as Hm which is the uh, height up to which the fluid uh, catalyst particles are actually packed in its settled condition. Now, as a next step suppose if we gradually increase the velocity of the gas. Suppose if we gradually increase the superficial velocity, so if the superficial velocity of the gas in, in the fixed bed condition if this is u1 and suppose if the superficial velocity here is u2 which is slightly greater than u1, then what happens is that these fluid particles the, the drag force that is exerted by the gas stream which is moving past these particles is now going to be uh, just equal to the gravitational force which is exerted by the particles due to its natural weight and so therefore, the uh, particles will be fluidized and so the particles will start raising. So, here one could see that there will be two phases where there will be some section which is raised and some section which actually stays as packed as it was before. So, this, this kind of a regime is what is called as the minimum fluidization regime. called the minimum fluidization regime. So, now if I look at the third case where there will be a aggressive bubbling suppose if I further increase the uh, flow rate superficial velocity of the fluid which is actually flowing into the tube. So, suppose if I increase the superficial velocity if it is u 3 which is greater than u 2 if I further increase the superficial velocity then there is the there is going to be aggressive bubbling of the gas. So, the gas bubbling starts inside. So, there will be aggressive bubbling of the gas and along with it these uh, fluid particles are now going to be suspended around these bubbles. So, these bubbles now carry the fluid particles along with it and therefore, there will be aggressive bubbling and it is also going to have aggressive amount of mixing of these particles and therefore, there will be aggressive mixing of the uh, of the reactant species in the uh, gas stream. So, typically there will be a porous or a perforated plate. Typically, there will be a porous or a perforated plate which prevents these particles from going back into the gas stream. So, this is, uh, regime is called the aggressive bubbling regime, aggressive bubbling regime. Then the next regime is suppose if you have a tube with gas flowing inside and if the, uh, if the superficial velocity is u 4 which is let us say greater than u 3. So, the velocity is now slightly greater than what it was in the aggressive bubbling case. Then what happens is called the slugging process where the gas is now so uh, the gas velocity is significantly higher and the uh, drag force is now going to be significantly higher than the uh, gravitational force which is exerted by the by the solid particles because of its uh, natural weight and that is going to be that uh, inequality is going to be uh, significantly predominant which is going to be predominant than the aggressive bubbling case and so there will be uh, uh, slugs which will be formed where the gas stream is now going to escape through these uh, uh, channels which is present. So, the, the gas stream is simply going to escape through these channels and the and so you can see that there will be channels of uh, particles and the gas stream is created inside the tube. So, this process of fluidization is called the slugging process where it happens at a, a significantly higher velocity. And the last uh, regime is called the lean regime. So, if there is a gas which is flowing here and if the velocity superficial velocity uh, is u 5 which is greater than the superficial velocity in the case of slugging, then there is going to be a, a lean phase where the particles are suspended 
with, uh, with very low density all through the reactor. So, that is called the lean phase. So, in this discussion today, we are primarily going to look at the fluidization regime and we will not look into the slugging and the aggressive bubbling regimes. Even in the fluidization regime, there will always be some minimal bubbling which will be present and the particles will be carried by these bubbles and so we are going to look at how these bubble, how these particles are carried by bubbles and what fluid mechanics is involved and how can it be used in terms of designing the fluid as bed reactor which is the objective.